Do you know that you can add a range of 20 kilometers into your electric bikes with just three simple tricks? I have another 40X second generation. It's been two years that I'm driving this bike and I have figured out that there are only three simple tricks that can add so much to your range. I think about an year ago in this and in this video I have shown you that you can drive a range of 30 kilometers if the shown range is only 19 kilometers and that you can get a range of 120 kilometers even though the two range shown is only 85 kilometers. Remember the 40X Aether of second generation offers only a two range of 85 kilometers unlike the third generation which is present right now which has a range of close to 105 kilometers. But the batteries do degrade right? Now after two years also will these tricks work? After a drive of 10,000 kilometers and after two years of use, will that work? So here's the plan. I have a charge left of close to 28% and in sports mode, I have a range left of 18 kilometers and I have made a route plan. So from this point, from where I am located, we are going to drive to 22 kilometers to reach the home. First route is we are going to ride from this point from my location up to this point, which is around 11 kilometers. There we take a break, have a chai and then we start from there, reach back home which is close to 10 to 10.5 kilometers, which comes around to 22 kilometers in total. Now, if my tricks work, then we'll reach back home with some charge to spare or with probably 0% of charge. Now, if my tricks don't work, I'll simply end up on roads. As simple as that. So come on, let's do this. Making it interesting, in the last 10 kilometers of the ride, there is no either charging station. We have no option but to get home and charge. If I can't make it, I'm on the roads. Simple. The current weight on the bike is around 135 kilos. We are two people riding with two laptop bags and portable charger for the bike. You see, the electric bikes are very sensitive to three factors. Weight of the bike, the headwind and tire pressure. Every detail will reduce the range by 10 to 20% very easily. And so you have to be really range conscious. And this was the main reason why I got Aether back then, simply because you can trust the range shown on this dashboard. It accurately shows you how much range you can get and I haven't seen any other EV that gives this accurate prediction of the range. But what it doesn't show is you can get more range than that. And that is exactly what we are gonna show now. As a matter of fact, many friends of mine who bought Ola S1 Pro have complained that their range suddenly drops from 5 km to 1 km and that makes them completely lose the trust on the dashboard eventually and that adds some mental stress as well. I hope Ola fixes this pretty soon. In fact, not only Ola, there are a lot of EVs in India that have this problem. The Oban Roar, for example, the latest EV, the company marketed saying that the two range of the bike is close to 150 kilometers, but it ended up with a two range of only 100 kilometers, like from 150 to 100 kilometers. It's a huge drop. Just imagine the disappointment the company is gonna give to a customer. I think every electric bike should start this norm of just mentioning the two range and not the certified range. But however, lately, even Aether has started to put on the certified range on their ads. It makes me kind of disappointed to be a fellow Aether rider. But anyway, so far we are doing good. Range drop is similar to the distance covered. And you must have noticed already that I'm maintaining a speed of around 30 to 32 kmph. And that's your first trick. Always maintain your speed between 25 and 40 kmph as much as you can. And I prefer to do this in sports mode all the time. And here is the result of it. Sports mode on this bike, it usually gives a range of 60 kilometers. However, I get a range of 68 kilometers on this. And you can see that this stats is based on my driving pattern. I'm not sure from which date they have taken this stat, but this stat is based on my driving pattern from whichever date that they took. From what I learned about sports mode, I might be technically wrong, but it works fine for me. I feel that eco mode basically puts limitations on the power available for the motor to use. So every time you speed above 45 kmph in eco mode, you actually lessen the stress on the motor. Similar to what you hear with a bike or car if you are driving in the first gear. And then you shift gears and you get the most mileage as you go up in the gear, right? Same thing happens with EVs too and sports mode is like the third gear and the load on the motor will be extremely less and you have flexibility between low speed and high speed and the sports mode won't accelerate too fast. And this is the second trick. Never accelerate too fast. A rash driving will give a huge drop in your range. So maintain a consistent speed as much as you can. Be it 30 kmph or 25 kmph, just be consistent. 
every time you slow down like this speed breaker for example just give a smooth acceleration a smooth ride gives a very less load on the battery and this takes us to the third and important trick now that you are at 30 kmph every time you slow down you can regenerate your battery simply turn the accelerator to the other side and you will hear the motor sound change and your bike starts to slow down it means that you are regenerating simply by doing this consistently you can add at least 2 km of range for regeneration your bike has to be in between the speeds of 25 and 40 kmph faster than 40 it can't regenerate if the speed is below 25 it can't regenerate the 25 to 40 kmph is a sweet spot for either that i have figured out which is similar to the sweet spot that you have on a petrol bike for the best mileage so here we are we have about 10 km left and 14% of charge at this low charge dashboard says that the driving mode doesn't matter beat echo ride sports and walk mode we shall get the same range now this is a trap this is a trap assuming that you would get same range in sports mode if you drive faster you would end up killing your range just killing your range because speed drains your battery oh did you see that did you see that the range just fell to 9 km so now we are going to ride a distance of 10 km with only 9 km left i think we might end up on road today without charge let's see have you guys observed this bug on your ether dashboard every time you turn on the bluetooth once you start the bike the bluetooth turns off now this is not because of subscription because i have purchased the subscription recently in spite of the subscription bluetooth has this issue anyway we have a bigger task now to reach back home without ending up on roads we have a range of 10 km and the trip distance is also 10 km from here and by the way there is a fast charger on our way here but let's not charge let's see if we can reach back home by the way this is a last charging option on this route there is no other ether charging stations on this route these fast chargers they used to be crowded all the time simply because you could charge your bike for free but ether started to charge money for this and the crowd just came down so much and now it is to find a fast charger is much easier but you got to pay 1 rupee per minute so if you charge for 30 minutes you have to pay 30 rupees and gst on it it's not as expensive as petrol but if you look at overall cost if you rely too much on fast chargers your ether would be more expensive than a petrol scooter because remember you paid a premium to purchase a bike the bike itself was costly you got this bike at around 1.5 or 1.6 lakh on top of that there is a subscription plan to use the mobile app to use navigation and the bluetooth features and subscription costs around 1000 rupees per year and yet this bluetooth has issues and here see the maps also have an issue as i drive forward the map is getting updated backwards in contrast the google maps on my phone is picking up the route well and it is showing me the right route as you can see the dashboard maps definitely need some fixes and improvements it just feels that subscription is overpriced for the value that you get from the dashboard have you guys also taken the subscription please do let us know in the comments below with each kilometer passing by i am getting anxious if we can make it or not do you think we can make it please do let us know in the comments below range left and the distance to be covered is getting very close i think ether dashboard maps can't pick the flyover and roads underneath the flyover the map issue seems to be solved now when we were riding under the flyover it was struggling to pick the route and was giving wrong navigation probably it was thinking that i'm driving on the flyover i think ether dashboard maps can't pick the flyover and the roads underneath the flyover but the maps on my phone was fine you see this ether dashboard has very poor sunlight readability you must have observed already that i am trying to make shadows to see the information on the dashboard on a hot sunny day sunlight readability of this dashboard is very poor and we are getting closer to the destination now i think these tricks are working pretty good so far range is catching up well tricks are working pretty good so far we have been maintaining our speed consistently at 30 to 32 kmph and regenerating every time we slow down the problem this time in comparison with the low charge ride that i had previously is that this road has a lot of speed breakers and a lot of potholes and that is a problem you see every time you slow down and raise your speed from 0 to 30 and 32 again you are just losing up the range because you have to accelerate and when you are low on charge electric bikes they get too sensitive to the tiniest details like this regeneration is also hurting my fingers the manual regeneration is not comfortable thing to do 
i mean the longer you do the more pain you get on your finger joints but if it is worth the range that you are getting then probably why not to be honest i have done lot of test rides of multiple evs but no bike has matched the accelerator calibration of the ather yet calibration is so so good that every minute turn of the accelerator is considered and you can see the speed vary ever so slightly it's not so harsh too it's perfectly calibrated at these times particularly when you are low on charge range anxiety will kick in like anything and there is no charger on this route that makes it feel worse so do you guys think we can make it looking at the range left and the distance please do let us know in the comments below and now that we are getting closer for anyone thinking of purchasing an ether from my experience of driving ether for the last 2 years and for driving it for more than 10000 kilometers now the best thing about ether 450x is that when you charge your bike at your home and strictly use inside the city and have an occasional long ride like i do for those purposes the bike is really really good and it saves your petrol expenses extremely well on top of this my biggest love with this bike is for the reliability in spite of whatever software bugs you get the bike is not software dependent i mean you can just plug in the key and start riding if the bike has charge as simple as that and this is one of the biggest reason i chose not to buy an ola s1 pro in spite of that bike offering a better range than ether because you might get slightly higher range than ether but at the final stretch of 20% of charge if you can't trust the range left there is nothing worse that can happen to the joy of riding an ev right and the ether has this amazing fast charging network at least in bangalore you have more than 150 charging stations inside the city but irony is that there is no charging station on this route that we are driving currently now having said the best things about the bike now here are the worst and the things i hate about this bike first thing is a dashboard it is just so glitchy all of a sudden it goes into this infinity loop that the ether logo pops up it stays there it restarts and gets stuck in the logo again and this is not like one time occurrence it happens more frequently more frequently probably 3 4 times a month and every time this happens you have to restart the bike just imagine if something like that happens right now right now when we are low on charge and we need to know exactly where we are heading because at this point we can't paste our range at this moment the second thing that i hate is the navigation it just can't pick the flyovers it's not reliable with flyovers it happened to me like multiple times that it chose a straight route if i don't take the flyover for example the google maps would update the route and show an updated one asking me to take a left or right or whatever but on ether dashboard it doesn't happen that way you have to move away from a flyover and wait for the map to get updated instead i started to use the google maps on my phone instead simple right third thing is that you would never know if the regeneration is happening or how much did you regenerate i mean you can get an indication from the sound of motor but there is no indication on the dashboard and this is for the manual regeneration i think the latest ether the 450s has something called coasting regeneration as well that probably has some indication on the dashboard i think and the latest model of ether has features like auto hold extra range tire pressure monitoring system and a simple button for reverse gear we don't have it on this bike you see this bike is 2 years old so now we are getting closer to our destination finally finally we made it that was one exciting ride isn't it you see this we have 1 km left now tricks have worked really well when we started in sports mode we had a range of 18 km and we had to drive 22 km now we have traveled that distance and still have a km left in the bike with a total weight of 135 kg and with 2 years old ether you could still squeeze in more range than what is shown on the dashboard as a matter of fact you can apply these tricks with every ev because to maintain a consistent speed and not to accelerate is constant for every battery and every motor with a range shown of 18 km we just drove a distance of 22 km with a km to spare it means we have got 5 extra km for a charge of 28% and for 100 km you could easily squeeze in a range close to 20 km all this with a pillion rider and with a total weight of 135 kg just imagine the amount of range that you can add if you apply these tricks if you are a solo rider today's ride shows us four important things first thing is the tour range estimate shown on your ether dashboard is still reliable even after 2 years you can count on it particularly if you are low on charge i mean if the bike charge is low it's pretty easy for a software to screw up the tour range estimate it happens with the smartphones also 
I mean the battery drops suddenly from 15 to 10 or 8. But Acer does a pretty good job in this. The two range estimate shown is really trustworthy. Second point is the Aether dashboard navigation and software needs a lot of fixes. If you are someone who is planning to purchase an Aether in some time, be prepared that you might face these issues at any point of time. And don't get me wrong, I am not sure if this issue is so widely spread. But I know a lot of people who has the same issues and have also mentioned about their issues in the comments below. So if you have also faced any issues about your software or dashboard of Aether, please do let us know in the comments below. Third point is no matter how buggy or screwed or issues that your dashboard has, the fundamentals of Aether works fine. Simply just put in the key, press the power button, if your bike has charge, it works. It works. Fourth and important point is, any time from today, if you are low on charge, you have these three tricks to play around to squeeze the best range from your EV. Have you tried these tricks before? If not, please do it right away and do let us know your experience in the comments below.